Hey guys. Well, a couple of videos ago, I went over some CNC control software and the choices that are available uh, on the market today. With the upgrade to the DMM servo motors, I really felt like it was time to upgrade the control software and maybe go in a different direction. And in the video, I mentioned a couple of choices that I really would liked. Uh, one being Linux CNC and the second being the Maso. In order to run Linux CNC, the initial cost is not that great because you can usually find yourself a PC laying around. Linux CNC is free. Now, in order to run the servo drives, I'm going to need some Mesa cards. And then you can pick these up at Mesa.com or Mesa.net. I'll post a link in the video description. But <clears throat> that's basically all you need. This is a 5i25 that I picked up. And I also picked up a new breakout board. This is a 7i76 from Mesa. There are plenty of inputs and outputs for these boards. Now this particular board is a PCI slot board and it goes inside the computer. And then this of course will is the breakout board and it will go inside my new control cabinet. Now you can pick both those boards up from Mesa for $199. I think it was, I don't know, $218 or something with shipping. And if you already have a spare computer, you're good to go. If not, then you can purchase a off-lease type computer like this one off eBay. This particular computer came with the everything you need, the mouse, the keyboard, computer, and a 17-inch monitor. Now, the monitor is a Hewlett Packard, the PC and keyboard and mouse are Dells. I prefer Dells, it's just because I'm used to them. I've been using Dells on all my builds, so those are the ones I look for. Remember what the specs are on this particular computer, let me see. So you can see it has Windows 10 loaded on it. It was supposed to be a 80 gigabyte hard drive, but it came with a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Uh, I'm not gonna complain much. I had intended to remove the hard drive anyways and replace it with a solid state drive, so that was fine. Uh, it has four gigs of memory, and it's a Pentium 3.2 gigahertz. Pretty substantial computer. I think it'll be fine for running Linux. I picked up a used uh, solid state drive. This is an 80 gigabyte, $22, $27 off eBay. So I'll load Linux on this, and uh, I'll just reserve the original hard drive and the CPU. Now I picked this PC up from this company, uh, Discount Computer Depot on eBay, with a one-year warranty. Now all of this was $105. Plus I picked up the solid-state drive that was $27, and then the Mesa cards which are $199. So for 300 and say $350, I've got a Linux-based CNC controller that will handle anything that I'm able to uh, throw at it. There's plenty of inputs and outputs with the Linux CNC and the Mesa cards should be good there. So now it's just a matter of installing the solid state drive I, uh, this is a two and a half inch laptop type drive and it's going into a three and a half inch uh, regular size drive bay. So I printed off this adapter that's supposed to bolt to this and uh, it looks like everything lines up perfectly. However, um, this is a little sloppy in the drive bay slot. So what I'm going to do is just put some 3M tape, double-sided tape, and just kind of stick this in here and then stick this into the computer just to keep it from rattling around. So let's open this up. Let's get this hard drive installed and then we'll try to load some of the software. 
This is a Dell Optiplex. These are pretty straightforward computers. You just pull this latch out on the side here. And you can pop the top up. And you can see that here is the PCI slot. And then here is, up under here is the hard drive. So there's this little latch here. You just lift that up. Slide the drive out. This is the DVD. We'll just lay it over to the side. And lift it up again and slide out. This computer happens to have a, a card reader for all different kinds of cards. And to my surprise, it was supposed to have a 80 gig hard drive in there. But as you can see, it's got a 500 gig hard drive. And you can see how nice and clean everything is. I mean, this computer looks fairly unused. So I'm pretty stoked about that. All the caps look good. They're not bubbled. So to get the hard drive out, it has these little clips over here and so you need to just kind of squeeze it and there's one over here too so squeeze both of them and then slide it back like so and then we can just let me put this up here and you can just lift it out and that's pretty much all there is to it unclip the power cable and the the other smaller cable and the hard drives out now as I mentioned earlier I printed out this little uh, holder here and I could bolt it if I had some bolts I could screw it to there but I don't so what I'm gonna do is use some three uh, use some double-sided tape uh, let me plug it up like so pretty I mean it's pretty straightforward you can't hardly mess that up and then I'm just going to use some 3M double-sided tape and uh, put a couple strips across there Then I'll put a couple strips on the back side and I'll just kind of stick it down like so. Then I'll just peel this off and we'll just stick it in. And that should that should keep it secured uh, for the most part. So I'll just kind of line it up with where the bolt holes were supposed to go. Alright, out with the old, in with the new, solid state drive, we can put these back in, you see they have these little guides, and you slide it forward, and it just kind of locks it in, and then, same thing with the hard drive, or the CD, DVD drive, alright, we're all set. So we've got our hard drive installed, now I want to install the 5i25, the uh, Mesa card. It's going to go into the uh, PCI slot. You want to be careful with um, electronic cards. You want to make sure you ground yourself. Uh, you don't want to rub your feet on the carpet and get any kind of electrostatic discharge going on. So you need to set these jumpers here, uh, W1, if you're going to use an external 5 volts, you want the jumper in the down position on W1, 
as well as W2. W3 is for 5 volts or 3.3 volts for your IO tolerance. Um, up is the 5 volts, so that's default. We'll leave it there. Uh, W4. W4 is for internal pull-ups, and the up position is the correct position. And W5 is for the PCI bus voltage, and this is you know just used for troubleshooting. Uh, and you want that default in the up position. So it looks like the board's already pre-configured uh, default the way I want, which is 5 volts external. So in order to get to the PCI slot, uh, you just pop this up and you can pull these out and then we'll just get a hand free here we can just pop one of these out you just slide this up pop that out all right let's pop it in here first like so there we go and let's try to pop it in here. And there she goes, all installed. Now you may have a newer motherboard that has a PCI Express, and they do have a 6i25 for that, but most computers have both, so um, just check and see which would verify what empty slots you have uh, in your PC and go from there. So that's really all there is to it. We can put the cover back on. And we're all set. And so we have, you can see the back of the card here. We have our connection. All right, so now all we have to do is just load some software. So, let's so thanks for watching the video. Please feel free to comment if you have any questions. Thumbs up if you like the video. Please subscribe. And most importantly, be safe.